So yeah, this is why you don't rush the main story campaign. There are many secret interactions that you can easily miss out on and they are completely gone if you pass certain points of the main campaign. That's why today we're going to take a look at even more amazing things and secrets you might have missed in Marvel Spider-Man 2. But coming right up, you're running with the other Spidey or even Wraith is not the only random encounter you might get with other heroes around New York. And actually there is one more that only triggers up until a certain point in the main story and that's with Agent Venom himself. So for me, this triggered at around the point I did the mission called Live to Hunt and Hunt to Live. And this is going to make almost any crime activity have a chance to now have him spawn there. And he even has cool interactions with you. You can do team combos against enemies, takedowns and whatnot, and all that kind of stuff. Even at the end, you will have additional dialogues and interactions that you can have with him. So yeah, pretty awesome to see this. But unfortunately, if you progress past certain points in the main campaign, eventually he will no longer spawn. So you're kind of missing out on some potentially very awesome interactions. Now for me, this doesn't seem to spawn at all when playing as Peter, but it totally does as Miles. I kind of tried for two hours straight to make these crime activities spawn and none of them had Agent Venom when I was playing with Peter, but they will always spawn when playing with Miles. Again, totally let me know down below in the comments if they do spawn for you when playing as Pete and what dialogues do you have. Also, another very cool attention to detail that only now I noticed is that the other Spidey during crime activities will not just take down enemies, but try to help in other ways too. So for example, in one of these extinguish the fires in case of the oil tankers, I saw that Miles was trying to extinguish the fires on the tanker itself after we took down the enemies, which was one of the objectives to complete that crime activity. So really interesting, it was the only one instance I noticed this, but there should be others too. So if you do notice them, totally let me know down below in the comments. But moving on, yes, it's totally possible to clip out of bounds and essentially explore all the areas around Manhattan, including a few that are possibly references to future DLCs. There are entire zones that are fully rendered with NPCs, traffic, and even buildings that you can explore right now with an easy trick. So to pull that off, you need to head over up here north of Harlem. There's going to be this bridge slightly in the middle with the two-way train tracks. So what you're going to do in this case is to just head up the tracks until you get hit with the leave area screen. To make this easier to clip to the other side, get as close as possible to this third plank from that middle bridge joint. So essentially right before that pop-up screen even appears. Because if you stay exactly in this spot and a train appears behind you, it will hit you but actually push you to the other side through that menu pop-up screen. You might have to do a couple of dodges backwards to get carried to the restricted area, but it should give you unrestricted access to the entire location after that point. And from here, you pretty much have complete unrestricted access to all the areas all around New York. Now, up north, you're not gonna see much because most of these are just LODs without any collisions. However, if you take a look to your right side on the map, you're going to notice this, for example, island slash sort of like swamp area in which you can go in. And yes, there are some fully rendered buildings over here. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to be part of a future DLC, but it definitely seems like something um, you could probably have a couple of villains in, maybe flood the area and have something happen in here. There's definitely a better brightness compared to some of the other areas that are completely out of bounds. However, if you take a look to the complete east side of Astoria and Brooklyn and all of these new sections of the map, these entire sections are completely rendered. Well, for the most part, some are, some aren't. So we can see that there are some stadiums happening over here. We do have a bunch of um, really interesting buildings with a bunch of rockets. I'm not sure if there's going to be some um, space thing going on in this location. Plus quite a few that eventually will bring you to a fully rendered city. So this is essentially what you can also see if you take a look past Peter's house. Eventually we'll get hit with a wall. Well, this is the area that you're kind of prohibited from going into. And I'm actually surprised that this is completely rendered. Like this entire zone could be a whole district. There are cars going by. There's full on traffic. Things will happen. However, you will start to notice lots popping in and obviously textures kind of blending in very odd ways because you're not supposed to be here. You might even notice some very wrong collisions, for example, just vehicles going up sides of buildings and whatnot and 
NPCs clipping through things in odd ways. So you will notice quite a lot of strange stuff over here. You can, of course, also use this to circle around all the way back down south and even travel to the Statue of Liberty. Now, unfortunately, I really thought that this area would be completely rendered. Unfortunately, that's not going to be the case. You still have perch points and you can still zip around because there are connection points for your webs. But you cannot, for example, jump on the statue as it doesn't really have any collisions. Funny enough, there are fully rendered boats that actually travel right to this location. However, you probably couldn't be able to ride them as you would get hit with a screen pop-up eventually. But speaking of out of bounds, we also have some cut content that didn't make it in the full game and we kind of have a hint to what happens to Rhino. We do know that in the previous games we fought him. Well, it seems that he eventually met his demise at the hands of, well, you guessed it, none other than Craven himself. So this is actually a very obscure thing that you have to do a bunch of stuff to find under the map. So the level in which you find this reference is going to be right beneath Greenwich. However, to reach that location, you have to start from the docks area right here in the financial district instead. So if you go to the docks, you're going to eventually notice that there's this group of NPCs. But if you walk by this corner, you're going to fall down and clip through the map. From this point on, simply just use your web swings or just grab on anything you can and traverse up until the body of water is gone and now you can completely web swing beneath the city. From this point on, you're going to try to make your way to that point I was talking about without falling because you can indeed die if you fall too much down. Eventually, you will notice a secret level spawning in front of you and from this point on, you will want to trigger your web wings and essentially make your way to the other or opposite side of this structure. Up until you see this exposed pipe, so immediately trigger some kind of slow motion and then try to zip inside. Now, from this point on, I'm pretty sure that we had the same kind of path during the lizard encounter, but eventually this should bring you right here to the last section with all of this water going on. And you're going to try to head over to the right side. Now, you're not going to be able to enter that final duct. However, if you pop into photo mode, you're going to have this small gap beneath that that you can pretty much wiggle yourself into and eventually reach the other side. Once you do, what you will notice is that there's an entire sort of craven kind of ambush area. I'm not sure if I ever noticed this in the main story, but if you look right here to the left side, you will notice there's a throne, clearly one belonging to him, plus a bunch of heads mounted on the wall, including one belonging to none other than Rhino himself, possibly one belonging to the Vulture, and I'm pretty sure one is Electro or maybe Scorpion, but I might be wrong on that one. So yeah, pretty much a bummer since we're not going to be able to encounter Rhino anymore unless this is like just not canon and something that was scrapped from the game. But assuming that this is true and intended, this might imply that unfortunately Rhino did meet his demise. That or maybe his like headpiece from the costume is just being held together by maybe some kind of head prosthetic. But um, who knows if this is his real face, which I kind of doubt. But if it is, then yeah, this pretty much implies that he is completely gone. But speaking of other characters, if you head over on this side of the map in Midtown, pretty much at the Wakanda Embassy, if you head over in with Miles, you're gonna get a secret interaction, which is basically the Wakanda Forever Salute that you can pull off in front of its door. It works on either side of the building, he will always gonna be able to pull this off. No achievement pop-up nor any dialogues, however, I would love some kind of tie-in or maybe a cameo of Black Panther maybe in a future DLC, even if it's just passing by. Because, I mean, at this point, we have the salute, we have one of the costumes that definitely looks Wakanda-inspired, so I would love to see that in this game. But moving on to other interesting references, if you go and fight against the Sandman spawns in any of the crystal spawn locations, you might see quite a number of these, for example, pipes that you can help burst, which are going to immediately one-shot the ads. And this is true because this is going to immediately dissolve them, so it's an actually very easy trick to pull off and essentially just take down entire groups of enemies in no time. You can even help use the web line to pull them in and eventually one-shot them very easily. However, you will also notice that they will do their best to completely avoid any of that water damage. So even in a very restrictive area like this, I noticed that some of these ads will actually duck beneath that water stream if they don't have other ways around it. 
and this is going to help them completely avoid any of the damage. Plus, if you're in any other location, they will constantly try to avoid that water in any way possible, so that's a really cool attention to detail. And the final attention to detail that you might notice if you go at the top of skyscrapers or especially some of these glass window buildings is that oftentimes you might find some of these cleaners on the side that actually make their way up and start cleaning the sides of the building. They even have their own interactions and dialogues and they will even mention you if you go there. It's a pretty cool detail that I didn't notice too often. It only happened to me once on the sides of one of these buildings, but I'm pretty sure they should spawn on pretty much everywhere. But that's pretty much it with the video. Totally let me know down below in the comments if you have any other obscure interactions or secret easter eggs. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.